Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 655 for the 10th of December. Uh, a bit late in the recording uh, because uh, uh, we had the DPA open mic six and a half hours of uh, intense discussion about all sort of things all from all around the world. Do check it out uh, over the DPA open mic channel and uh, major developments today uh, again, you know, there's a lot of major development. Uh, it is fair to say that the Ukrainian lines are cracking. Uh, there is no other way to you know explain this, uh, to to justify this. The simply the lines are cracking, which is why we are seeing a lot of advancement from uh, multiple places. And it might not be because of Ukraine is weakening, uh, it could also be because the Russians are pushing. So you no, know, just just to qualify that, the Ukrainians might be fighting just as hard, and uh, they might have just has um, the same amount of resources that they have previously, but simply the Russians are pushing right now. So um, the First thing is over at the Bakhmut front. Over the Bakhmut front, the Ukrainian sources have acknowledged the Russian advances over in this area here in the north uh, western part of Bakhmut. So this is Bakhmut city, as you can see, the Bakhmut city. So the the latest uh, updates from the Deep State U.S. mapping shows that, uh, including also by geolocations, that the Russian forces have basically stomped. I think I, the, the arrow need to be fatter. So, uh stomp into this um, major entrenchment along the highway moving towards Chasif Yad at Kromove region and the Russian forces are making this push out. Uh, there is also, uh, uh, so the, the Ukrainians basically their mapping have changed to reflect this geolocation. They basically cannot uh, hide this information anymore due to the geolocation of the Russian forces. Similarly, uh, we do also have uh, Russian forces uh, geolocated in these locations on the eastern part of Bodanivka. Oh, wrong color. Uh, eastern part of Bodanivka clearly shows that the Russians are making this push on the eastern part of Bodanivka. Uh, there is also uh, updates coming from the uh, from the southeastern, sorry, southwestern part of Bakhmut, where the Russian forces have basically recaptured the entire tree line around here. They are now pushing out of the tree line, and uh, they are making this advancement, uh, basically moving uh, rapidly towards Ivanivsky. So, which is over here, this is Ivanivsky. So, the Ukrainian, uh, oops, so Ukrainian lines are now uh, basically, you know, around, along these three lines. Uh, they are trying to hold these three lines around here. And definitely they are along this tree line and this small little neighborhood along this tree line here, this tree line, this tree line. And um, this entire area is going to be very hard. There's another tree line over here. I'm not sure if there's some heavy entrenchment around this region here on the western part of Kromove. Uh, we will we will know, you know based on uh, further drone footages coming out from these regions here. If not, then the Russians is likely going to push pretty fast uh, in this area here into the northern part of uh, Ivanivsky and it's going to trigger some kind of a mass withdrawal uh, if the Ukrainians are not careful uh, with holding the position. But uh, the northern part over here, uh, in the south of uh, Bodanivka is going to be quite strong. So I believe that the Russians will will uh, likely put pressure on Bodanivka and then go for Ivanivsky. Uh, basically, you no know, heading in this direction and capture this settlement that have been elusive from the Wagner forces. The Wagner have tried to capture it, but they have not succeeded uh, during those days around a year ago, almost a year ago. So uh so this is the northern flank uh further up uh, in the northern part of Bodanivka, there is also fighting reported uh in the north and towards Rykhorivka as well as towards uh orikovo vasilevka so let me draw sc scroll up a bit a bit they are attacking in these directions so the russians are also making this uh advancement in this area here uh in the north in on top of the fighting south of Bodanivka. so this this offensive Operation is extremely, extremely intense. I think the Ukrainians cannot hold this, uh, hold these lines unless they have a significant reinforcement to help them. And our uh, footages coming out from uh, the front line also show that the Russians have a lot of great rockets and they are basically launching a early war style of uh, rocket bombardment with a uh, four great truck, four fully loaded great trucks firing all at the same time. Uh, this is the, uh, this have not been seen uh, for more than a year. So uh, the Russians definitely have a lot of uh, no new rockets coming out either from the factories or from you know their uh, allied countries like you know Iran or coming out from North Korea. Uh, I don't think they buy from China, but I, I doubt so uh, because I think China is also preparing for their own war. I don't think they will be selling, but 
Anyway, in the southern flank, the Russian forces are pushing towards Ivanivsky, fighting in the north of Klishevka, towards Klishevka and Dryevka. And uh, the Ukrainians are also continuing their counterattack over at Klishevka and Dryevka. So a uh, previous sit rep, we have, I mentioned that the Ukrainians launched a major counteroffensive operation across multiple fronts. And uh, this the, the front, uh, the attack st seems to be uh, still continuing. Uh, further south, uh, we have the Ukrainians continuing their counteroffensive over in the Kodumivka region. So far, uh, all these Ukrainian offensive have not seems to have any breakthrough. Um, so um, I think so that's all from the Bakhmut front. Uh, there are also you no know, over at the. Uh, I don't want to go to Sivas first. Let's go to another major front line changes. Is over at Donetsk. Uh, at the Donetsk front, this is the Donetsk front. At the Donetsk front, uh, particularly we are talking about Novo Mihailivka. Uh, Joe location. Uh, this one Joe located by Deep State UH clearly shows that the Russian forces have reached the outskirts of Nova uh, Novo Mihailivka. And the Deep State UA can see that the, they are very pissed off. They say that the situation had deteriorated to such an extent that the Russian columns are already entering the eastern outskirts of the village. And uh, clearly, he they are re very, very pissed off with the situation with the Russian forces making this push on the eastern part of Novo Mihailivka. And this actually shows what actually happened over the past one week. We keep on getting information about fighting at Novo Mihailivka. The Russians keep attacking, but we have no clear information what is exactly happening until this Joe location came out suddenly we realized that the Russians have actually uh, progressed by around, around two kilometers so if I overlay the previous days uh, uh, I mean my ping you can see that uh, at least they are they have moved around maybe one kilometer uh, in terms of the front line they advanced by at least one kilometers and if you consider gray zones uh, into it is probably around two kilometers with the geolocation location of Russian assault uh, and armored vehicles right at this junction over around here they are basically uh, entering uh, Novo Mihailivka so uh, previous uh, this is this is based on the latest report this on the today's report this is the latest information as you can see it's the 11th of December and um, and thus the Russian Defense Ministry in their latest report also read reported about fighting in this area here so uh, coming to the future uh, fighting around uh, Novo Mihailivka I'm going to change to the indicating them here previously we are always indicating them in the south uh, which i assume um just on a uh, administrative ba basis we're just gonna assume it's fighting in this area here because we have no information so now we know that the russians have basically arrived uh, at the edge or even in the first buildings of Novo Mihailivka. I think uh, coming in the next few days, we are going to see Russian forces storming into Novo Mihailivka and the Ukrainian forces going to put up a very, very big fight uh, around Novo Mihailivka and uh, make it uh, another Marinka. As, uh, because Novo Mihailivka, Novo Mihailivka is actually very, very important. Uh, if you look from the, uh, in the strategic perspective, Novo Mihailivka actually controls uh, this entire region. Uh, there is not much settlements around here so this is actually a major settlement uh, controls this entire area losing this means the russian forces will be penetrating through all this all this village and uh, they will allow them to attack into the rear of Novo, uh, boyeda into the rear of vodian and then this will actually cut off uh, any uh, eventually cut off uh, resupply to uh, uh, voleda region and this is going to collapse the entire front line around here uh, if the Russians continue to push in this direction. So uh, this this is the first line of defense for the Ukrainians along this entire chain of defenses. So uh, this is definitely you know, going to be a very, very big battle for the Ukrainian forces. Um, so uh, other than that, the Ukrainian forces also launched a counterattack over in the, uh, let me see, Marinka region and Boyeda. So this, is, this happened while the Russians actually still continue to make pushes in the north and the south of Marinka. According According to uh, a footage that came out, the Russians put another flag again uh, near to the previous one, the, the previous building, they put it here to show that the Russian forces are moving here. And there is also reports of the Russian forces pushing in the northern part of Marinka. Ukrainian forces continue to hold a small a small enclave uh, in this uh, settlement over here with reinforcement continue to be sent to the front. And uh, some of this reinforcement was engaged by the Russian forces as the, there was report of fighting near uh, Georgievka, uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry in their two days two days uh, summary, two days report. Joe location of uh, Russia, uh, Ukrainian forces getting attacked uh, by airstrikes around uh, this region here shows that the Russians 
are already moving the front line much more forward. They are moving in this direction uh, towards Georgievka. So uh, the Battle of Marinka probably is going to be over uh, soon. Although I did say that around one, two months ago. So, you know, I might be wrong. The Russians may be just, you know, playing a game and I just going to just drag it on. A uh, geolocation of Ukrainian forces over at Krasno Horivka. Uh, this is a pretty late geolocation. Uh, just show the Ukrainian forces is over there. Uh, over at the Voleda region, the Russian forces are again uh, conducting a fire mission around the Mikulsky Voleda region, uh, attacking Ukrainian forces in around in the area. Uh, there is geolocation of our uh, Ukrainian forces getting hit by a Lancet uh, in the Vodian, uh, in the Vodian region, and uh, over at this uh, Novodonetsk region, the Russian forces also. Uh, launch an attack. Uh, this comes after you, the Ukrainians previously were actually was attacking around this location, uh, around this area here. The Russian forces are uh, basically counter attack. You can see the previous attack was in the north of Novo, uh, Novo Donetsk on the 9th and on the 10th the Russian forces basically counter attack and uh, forbid the Ukrainian forces that attack to conduct a uh, rotation. So, so this, this kind this thing basically uh, happened and uh, so that's it from the Donetsk front. And we move on over into the Zaporizhia front over at the Orkiv sector. This is also you know, one of the major uh, battlegrounds where the Ukrainian forces uh, decided to launch an attack. Uh, basically, I would say this is a counter-attack against the Russians' uh, advancement. Previous, the Russians previously have uh, captured uh, this front line uh, entrenchment uh, just south of no, uh, Robot Robotine. The Ukrainian forces basically launched an attack against Novo Prokopivka, according to the Russian Defense Ministry in yesterday's uh, SIP rep. Uh, the, Rush the Ukrainian forces probably attacking uh, from, from the side uh, rather than through here because this area here is now uh, controlled by the Russian forces. They probably try to hit from us from a weaker side, maybe trying to cut off the Russian forces that is ahead. Uh, but it's unlikely to be succe successful because the Russians can actually reinforce from the western part and the Russians continue their assault against uh, Robotine, probably coming from the west. So uh, the Ukrainian forces also counter attack over at Verbove according to the information from the Russian Defense Ministry in uh, today's report. Uh, we do not have much information other than that. So uh, apparently this there was four different attacks that was repelled. So uh, that's it from the Orekiv sector. Oh, so there's further information, sorry. Uh, Ryba reported that the Russian forces are pushing uh, along the highway from the Novo Fedorivka direction. They are pushing in this direction towards the south of Mara Tomashka. So this is a dangerous push, uh, but this area here is actually very uh, heavily defended. I think the Russian forces aren't, aren't going to be able to push very quickly so uh and what else uh, moving on uh over at the Huyapole sector there is fighting reported at Shevone according to the Russian defense ministry they inflicted fight, uh, fire mission on the Ukrainian forces over at Shevone region and um and over at this uh Velika Novosilka sector of the front line there is fighting reported at Staro Mayoske. uh basically it's the same thing uh, also, this was a fire mission. The Russian forces attacking the Ukrainian forces over in the uh, Staro Mayoske region. So that's it over at the Zaporizhia front. We move on from the Zaporizhia front into the uh, Kherson front. At the Kherson front, uh, there is a lot of geolocations uh, of uh, air strikes and drone strikes on, and on uh, as well as artillery strikes. So uh, over at the opposite shore of uh, Pridiniproske, so uh, there is a Lancet strike on Ukrainian boat uh, over at this uh, at the at the landing area here. There is another boat that was attacked by uh, by the Russians on the boats that was actually sailing across the D Dnipro River. Uh, further geolocation over at Krinky uh, to show that the Ukrainian forces are there. However, these are all geolocation of Russian airstrikes with the uh, with the air air bomb. And then this one is a, surf, uh, a surface to uh, surf, air to surface missile, and then this one was another air to surface missile. So uh, a lot of bombardments gone against the Ukrainian forces that's holding up around here, and uh, allegedly, according to Ryba, fighting has continued over at Krinky. So maybe this is a Russian attack around this area here while they are con conducting bombardments on the Ukrainian forces at Krinky. Uh, definitely, the Ukrainian forces is not giving up this uh, beachhead just yet. So we shall continue to watch this uh, uh, this slow crash, uh, like the known, like a slow motion car crash uh, continues over at this area here. Uh, there is also an MLRS attack against Ukrainian uh, base 
uh, just off this uh just off this uh probably around this area here along the river uh so so you can see they are getting hit by literally all sort of uh systems from drone artillery to airstrike to you know uh guided missiles so it's quite uh crazy so anyway we move on uh over at there's an, also another you no know, fire attack or airstrikes or you no know, once all sort of things artillery and aviation against ukrainian forces over at the Havrilivka. and uh, this actually uh, brings into attention about the various actions that russians have taken against ukrainian forces in this region here uh, previously we have this attack reported as Germany mayat on the 7th and then we have the location of another strike against uh, ukrainian forces at uh, vimka uh, in the previous seed rep and then now we have this over at right uh havrif lifka or Hag uh, or Gerivlovka. So this is this might suggest that the Ukrainian forces are trying to do something. They may be trying to co conduct some kind of crossing around this area here uh, during the f winter with the river frozen. As you as you might not uh, remember, or maybe you might remember, the Dnipro River actually is not this uh, this not this thick anymore. Uh, the, it had uh, gone through, you know. Uh, some kind of a uh, monopause and uh, this this river now is very very thin so uh, due to the destruction of the dam most of the water is now out of this reservoir so the river is now a lot thinner it is possible to cross if the river is frozen or at least in the surface area is hard enough then they can actually cross at least by infantry so uh, this this may be the reason why we are seeing some of these airstrikes and uh, attack on the Ukrainian forces along this part of the Dnipro River. So we shall continue to monitor and see whether if it is possible. I will say the same thing. The river here actually looks something like this. It's just a thin river uh, all the way from the Zaporizhia uh, city all the way down. It's no longer this watery you know, lake that you are seeing right now. It's just a small a small um, river with a grassland of a previously uh, underwater uh, surface. We move on. <sighs> So we move on. Uh, we go into the. We have covered all this thing. Have we, have we covered ADF Gulf front? So I don't think so. So over at the ADF Gulf front, the Russian forces continue their ADF Gulf offensive. We're fighting reported towards Kimik, Novo Kalinove on the eastern part of Novo Bamutivka, Stepove over at the Coke plant, as uh, over in the south, uh, uh, over the southern part uh, of you know, in the industrial area here yeah, south of Germany, south of Tonenke, over at Povomaiske there is a multiple Joe location of Ukrainian forces getting attacked in the in the in multiple regions uh, over here uh, along the industrial area just off uh, the the heavy entrenchment north of Spartak uh, over in Pervo, in the middle of Povomaiske as well as on the western part sorry eastern part of Nevelsky. So these are all geo location of Ukrainian forces getting hit, uh, but also just shows that the Ukrainian forces are over in those uh, in those region here. Particularly, I want to pull attention over to this one that was attacked. Uh, this, according to military summaries, geo location, uh, they bombed a Ukrainian. Uh, it was bombed uh, in the industrial area here, which shows that the Ukrainian forces actually counter attack and managed to take another building while the Russians are refusing to you know, heavily entrench this area just yet. They are probably holding uh, only some buildings and maybe some entrenchment around here. Uh, they are not staying there to get bombarded. And the Ukrainian forces probably take this advantage and try to counter-attack and capture certain areas around here. And then it attracted an airstrike on them around this just off the forest region here. So the Ukrainian forces definitely did not run away as I meant, as I thought that they would. Uh, thought that they would actually go on to set up a second line of defense. They didn't. They continued to stay around the region here and conducted counter-offensive operations. So, so the Ukrainians are very very courageous in that sense. So um, we have no news regarding the eastern flank of this uh, Adyevka. Previously, uh, in the previous report, if you have missed it, the Russian forces basically have a uh, secretly or you no know, quietly have continued to make uh, offensive in this direction here that was totally unreported until yesterday so uh until the day before yesterday so we actually have this update with the russian forces getting very very close to at the eastern part of adfk so we shall continue to wait for more information to see whether this is the case uh whether the banana will be banana or is it just fake news and uh over at the New York front, this is New York City. At uh, the New York front, there was fighting reported near Kirovo or Pishnifne, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. Uh, Pishnifne or Kirovo is around here, so there was some kind of a attack 
uh, in around this area here, probably moving towards Mayosk. So uh, this is Mayosk. So, uh, but there's not much to talk about. We do not know much of this area here. Moving on, we move move into the Severs Front. So, so this is Severs City. At the Severs Front in the southern part, there is uh, some Joe location. Uh, no, some mapping uh, from the Ukrainian forces. No, from Deep State UA, showing that the Ukrainian forces actually have uh, some kind of salient south of Rosolivka uh, in uh, in uh, contradiction to what we see from uh, pro-Russian mapping. We shall continue to wait and see uh, what is the situation around this area here. And uh, there is fighting reported. Uh, oh, this is actually updated information. Uh, this is 9th. And then the, there is your location of uh, U Ukrainian forces getting drone strike uh, on the western part of Spurney. So showing that the Ukrainian forces continue to hold position within Spurney. And uh, that's it from the Sievers front. Over the criminal front, so this is criminal city. At the criminal front, the Russian forces launched an attack towards uh, Huayko Rivka within the Serebransky forestry. While the Ukrainian forces are conducting uh, fighting within the Serebransky forestry or maybe near Serebransky forestry. There's fighting reported uh, in the area of Dibrova. Joe location of Russian forces uh, in the uh, in the Serebransky forestry continue to show the Russians uh, have that position, uh, which actually uh, corroborates our mapping. Further up north, uh, there is fighting reported in the eastern part of Terni, in the in the eastern part of Yampolivka, whilst the Ukrainian forces actually launch a counter-attack in the eastern part of Yampolivka. Joe location of Russian forces operating in that region shows uh, that the fighting is indeed happening over in the this criminal front. Uh, we've moved Further up north, over at the Makivka region, Makivka region, there is a Russian attack, according to uh, Ukrainian and a uh, Ukrainian Defense Ministry and Bryba, the pro-Russian source, reporting that the Russians are attacking towards Makivka region. So uh, we don't have much information other than this is currently happening. Uh, let Let's see what Bryba wrote. Let me, so the Bryba wrote that there is a resumption of fighting around the Makivka ne, uh, Nevsky line. And uh, the advanced unit of the 66 mechanized brigade of the Ukrainians uh, spotted the reconnaissance group of the Russians, and then they actually sent reinforcement uh, to this area here to deal with this Russian, uh, uh this Russian reconnaissance that probably going to lead to a major attack around this area in Makievka. So that is actually the details of what happened. Uh, we have nothing over the Sviatovaya front. We move into the Kupians front. So this is Kupian city. This is, uh, this is the Kupians front. At the Kupians front, uh, the there is your location of Russian forces uh, in the area of uh, Petrov uh where the Russians are, were previously attacking around this area here. But the main part of the attack or fighting is actually in the Sinkivka and Petro, uh, Petropolivka region, with the Russian forces attacking Sinkivka and Petropolivka. Uh, this information is uh, on the 10th. However, on by the 11th, uh, based on information from the Russian Defense Ministry, the Ukrainian forces counter-attack over at the Sinkivka and Petropolivka region. So the fighting is still ongoing around this uh, around this frontline region here. The Ukrainian forces also was reported to have attacked in the southern part of Liman Pershi. And uh, the Russians continue to report that they, they hammered some Ukrainian forces over at Kurilivka around this area here. So generally, this is a strategic, strategic picture of Kupian's front. And uh, that's about it. This is the summary. Uh, so do press the like button, subscribe, and uh, this is the summary for the day of 655 for the 10th of December. Do subscribe, do press the like button, do support the work, and uh, so that I can continue to monitor this war. If not, it will go the way of the Hamas-Israeli war that I do not want to report anymore because nobody watches, and then uh, I lose subscribers, you know, people dislike it. That was the point. So, so support, and then uh, I can continue to monitor, and I'll see you in the next update.